Groundbreaking new research suggests that early humans may have fought desperate battles for survival against giant saber-toothed cats, eventually leading to the cat's extinction. It is commonly assumed that early human hunters lived in and with a virtually unspoiled natural environment. However, this assumption is far too simplistic. We now know that human behavior influenced and altered ecosystems at least 1.5 million years ago, with significant consequences for other species. Several species of saber-toothed cats, also known as saber-toothed tigers, lived for more than 40 million years before becoming extinct with the emergence of the human genus. For example, the saber-toothed cat, Megantherian, an apex predator of the early and middle Pleistocene, went extinct in Africa about 1.5 million years ago, around the same time that Homo erectus-like creatures became arrived on the scene. The predator had massive teeth that it used to tear through flesh. The genus's youngest remains in Europe date back around 1 million years, while those in East Asia date back to about 400,000 years. Megantherian was built like a large modern jaguar but a little heavier and had stocky forelimbs and the lower half was lion-sized. Its neck muscles were large and designed to deliver a powerful shearing bite. Megantherian may have preyed on larger herbivores such as horses or rhino and elephant calves in Europe. Despite its enormous size, Megantherian was most likely able to climb trees, making it particularly dangerous. Indeed, the saber-tooth was no pussycat, standing more than a metre tall and weighing around 400 pounds. It had razor-sharp claws and deadly jaws, with upper jaw canines longer than four inches. The big cat had relatively small teeth compared to its large fangs, implying that once it had killed its prey, it would have eaten it slowly, either deep in the bushes or in a tree away from potential rivals. This suggests a similarity to modern leopards and their lifestyle, as it was likely solitary. Like other saber-toothed cats, it is thought to have used its long saber teeth to deliver a fatal throat bite, severing the majority of the major nerves and blood vessels. While the teeth would still be at risk, the prey animal would be killed quickly enough that any struggle would be minimal at best. Archaeological evidence proves that Megantherian interacted with early hominids, as evidenced by a Homo erectus-like skull discovered in Domenici, Georgia in the Caucasus Mountains. Remarkably, the skull shows occipital wounds that match the dimensions of Megantherian's saber teeth. The position of the bite marks indicates that the hominid was attacked from the front and top of the skull, and the bite was most likely caused by a cat that saw the hominid as a threat, rather than just a meal. The hominid most likely escaped the Megantherian, as no evidence suggests predation or scavenging, though the wounds were fatal. What's more, the abundance of animal carcasses left by this big cat has been proposed as a driver of early hominin expansion outside of Africa, as they followed the predator into Eurasia. Carbon isotope ratios in teeth provide further evidence that Megantherian hunted hominids in Africa. Megantherian was found to be more likely to prey on hominids, based on carbon isotope ratios in its teeth. The idea of saber-toothed cats as hominid predators is still being investigated, but they were most likely one of several fearsome beasts that hunted our early ancestors. The hominid relatives that were hunted by saber-toothed cats included Australopithecus africanus and its cousin, Paranthropus robustus, as evidenced by one specimen with bite marks in the top of its skull. Nonetheless, Megantherian's kills were an important source of carrion in their ecosystem, with their hunting remains frequently scavenged by early hominins. Because cats were unable to break bone marrow, their kills were most likely an important food source for Homo erectus. However, new discoveries in Europe show that early Neanderthal man was able to defend himself against these highly dangerous predators using their weapon technology. Archaeological evidence suggests that our big-headed ancient human cousins used spears to fight off large cats. According to scientists, a European species of saber-toothed cat coexisted with early humans and would have been a formidable foe. Several feline teeth and a piece of an arm bone were discovered at a site in Germany known for the oldest discovery of wooden spears. The 300,000-year-old animal fossils have been described as spectacular. 
According to the authors of the study, which was published in the Journal of Human Evolution, this is the first concrete evidence that the saber-toothed cat lived in Europe alongside Neanderthal man. The humorous bone from the cat appears to have been shaped into a simple hammer, the first of its kind anywhere in the world. The spears previously discovered at the site were thought to be used only for hunting herbivores, such as deer, for food, but the presence of saber-toothed cat remains suggests they served other purposes. Now, for the first time, the fossil evidence has demonstrated that the saber-toothed cat coexisted with these Neanderthals in Europe. Thus, Neanderthals and the saber-toothed cat were living 300,000 years ago in the same area, in the same landscape. The humans were hunters, but they were not alone. They had to defend themselves against all of the large predators as well. Animal bones found in Neanderthal camps indicate that they used the spears to hunt animals such as horses and deer. The discovery of five teeth and a bone from two saber-toothed cats at a former coal mine in Schöningen sheds new light on the dangers faced by early humans. The discovery demonstrates the possible day-to-day -day challenges that the Schöningen Neanderthals would have faced, implying that the wooden spears were not only used for hunting, but also as a weapon of self-defense. Now, archaeological records indicate that humans were already the top predator 500,000 years ago. They were able to kill and butcher, without interruption and competition, large animals such as rhino, bison, horse and giant deer. Nevertheless, it was unclear whether Neanderthals at the time used their weapons to kill the saber-toothed cat. If it could have been demonstrated that these hominins killed the cat, then that would have been very interesting, but without more skeletal material that is impossible to demonstrate. But late Neanderthals were known to kill cave lions and use panther paws as grave goods. For example, Neanderthals killed a cave lion by thrusting a wooden spear into its abdomen around 48,000 years ago, according to fossil lion remains. This discovery is the only direct evidence of Neanderthals hunting cave lions, as well as the oldest unequivocal evidence of any hominid killing a large predator, according to researchers. Nonetheless, such behavior most likely evolved much earlier in Neanderthals, as much as 300,000 years ago, as the previously discussed evidence suggests. For example, the researchers also examined three cave lion paw bones from another site, which date back at least 190,000 years. These bones were likely part of a pelt, skinned by Neanderthals from a freshly killed cave lion, known as Panthera spilea, according to the study. Neanderthals seem to have a huge impact on the wildlife of prehistoric Europe. According to the researchers, a puncture wound on a rib from the 190,000-year-old cave lion skeleton resembles the impact marks left by wooden spears. Based on the angle of the wound, hunters approached the lion, most likely an older male, from behind and stabbed it in the lower abdomen while it lay on its right side. Other skeletal parts bear stone tool marks, indicating that Neanderthals butchered the animal. The bones were found close together, and one had cut marks similar to those found when skinning animal hides. There is no evidence that the paw bones were used as pendants or parts of clothing, but a lion pelt with attached claws could have symbolized many things to Neanderthals and been worn as a special piece of clothing for warmth, spiritual reasons, or simply to display status and power. Another big cat, known as Panthera gombosurgensis, the European jaguar, is a panther species that lived in Europe between two million years ago, going extinct 300,000 years ago, around the same time that Neanderthals emerged. This raises the possibility that the jaguar was driven to extinction by competition or direct attacks by these archaic humans. Lastly, in Spain, evidence of a Neanderthal burial ground dating back 50,000 years has been discovered, including the remains of at least three Neanderthal individuals. The bones from two articulated panther paws were found embedded in an area where the rest of the animal's skeleton was conspicuous by its absence, notwithstanding its proximity to the Neanderthal skeletons, the study concluded. There is no evidence of an animal disturbing the bones, so it is possible that Neanderthals killed the panther and kept the paws as a trophy. Therefore, it's likely that the panther paws were added to the Neanderthal remains before burial, perhaps for ritual reasons. In fact, 
Scientists now believe that humans' impact on nature has been far greater and more long-lasting than we could have ever imagined. According to a new study, early human ancestors who lived millions of years ago may have caused extinctions long before our species evolved. Researchers proposed that the decline in large mammals observed in eastern Africa may have been caused by early humans. Extinction rates began to rise around four million years ago, which corresponds with the time when early hominid populations lived in the area, as evidenced by fossils' bones. In the study, researchers also investigated the extinction rates of large and small carnivores and how they correlated with environmental factors such as rainfall and temperature. They also investigated changes in brain size among human ancestors, such as Australopithecus. The researchers discovered that extinction rates of large carnivores were associated with increased brain size in human ancestors and vegetation changes, but not with precipitation or temperature changes. Therefore, carnivore extinction in Africa and Eurasia was most likely caused by direct competition for food with our hominid ancestors. Furthermore, recent research has focused on the timing and causes of hominin migrations out of Africa that coincided with predator and prey extinctions. This analysis of the chronology of key hominin sites in Eurasia concludes that bottlenecking occurred at the first major ice age of the Pleistocene, 900,000 years ago, in accordance with the genomic model, and coincided with a major diaspora from Africa into Eurasia, when hominins were on the verge of extinction. These waves of dispersal out of Africa included movements eastward across southern Asia and into Western Europe over a million years ago, as well as reverse migrations back into Africa. According to phylogenetic analysis, gene flow between African and Eurasian human populations began approximately 1.5 million years ago, with no detectable interruption since. Around 700,000 years ago, a second out-of-Africa expansion occurred, this time with interbreeding with some Eurasian populations and the extinction of more species of large cats and other animals. Contrary to popular belief, humans never lived in harmony with nature. Early humans were not only threatened by large cats, but also by other hominids, hyenas, crocodiles, poisonous snakes and giant birds of prey. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, please check out our many other videos on paleoanthropology and leave a like and a comment. We appreciate your support. Take care.